everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from AmandaCrochets.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful and warm three button cowl. The three button cowl is super popular and very stylish as well as customizable and the results of this is being worked in the back loop only which forms that beautiful texture and it provides a extra thick and warm cowl. Paired with three large coconut buttons, you have a few different options on how to wear this cowl. And the three button cowl is worked using double crochet stitches, which makes it a very beginner friendly pattern. So the finished cowl measures approximately 12 inches wide, I'm sorry, 12 inches wide by 33 inches in length. However, I will give you the different options in order to customize this cowl, whether you want this to be larger or wider. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to make this three button cowl. And let's begin today's tutorial. So for today's tutorial, you're going to need a size N 10 millimeter crochet hook. And for the yarn, I have two alternatives for you. So the first one that I use for my project is the Karen Tea Cakes and you're only going to need one cake of this yarn. And this is a 8.5 ounce or 240 gram cake. And this is 204 yards or 186 meters. This is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. And it's hand wash, lay flat to dry. This is classified as a number six bulky weight yarn and the recommended hook size is a US L11 or eight millimeter crochet hook. And the color I'm using today is called Ocean Night. And it's these really pretty shades of blue. Now Karen Tea Cakes are extremely, extremely limited and they're only found at Michael's stores or online. And I believe right now they are on clearance, so I did want to give another alternative just in case you do not have this in your yarn stash. I've made this with Bernat Softy Chunky yarn as well. The only difference is you're going to need two skeins of this yarn. So this is Bernat Softy Chunky. This is a 3.5 ounce skein or 100 grams. It's 108 yards or 99 meters, and this is 100% acrylic. Again, this is a number six super bulky weight yarn, and the recommended hook size is a US L11 or eight millimeter, and this color is called natural. So you could definitely use this yarn as an alternative if you do not have the Karen Tea Cakes. If you do not have the Bernat Softy Chunky, you can use whatever super bulky number six yarn that you would like. It's completely up to you. So you have two different options for this cowl. You're also going to need three buttons. I use the one and a half inch or 38 millimeter button. And these are the coconut buttons that you can find at Michaels. And you're going to need three of them. If you want to use an alternative, alternative button, you could definitely use that as well but I just got these at Michaels. So again, you're gonna need three buttons that are at least one and a half inches in circumference. And you're also gonna need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. So to begin your call, you're going to need to make a chain of 62. If you did want to alternate the size to make it a little bit bigger or smaller, as long as you have any number of chains, you will just you'll be just fine. There's no set multiple for this. But I just went ahead and chained 62. So to make a chain, you're gonna do yarn over your hook and pull through that loop on your hook. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Continue making 62 chains or whatever size chain that you would like and I will meet up with you and show you how to continue on to row one. Okay, once you have your 62 chains, you're going to make a double crochet into the second chain from the hook, and this is gonna start your row one. So the loop on your hook does not count. You're gonna count two chains in from your hook. 
So one and two, and in that second chain, you're gonna begin your double crochet. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that second chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And that is your double crochet. Okay, now you're going to make one double crochet in each of the chains across. And that chain that you just skipped is going to count as your first double crochet. So again, yarn over your hook, find that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So continue making one double crochet in each of the chains across and I will meet up with you at the very end and show you how to go on to row two of the cowl pattern. Okay, row one is complete. Now if you are a beginner crocheter, I highly recommend putting a stitch marker in the very last stitch and in the very first stitch of each row and move your stitch markers up as you make more rows. That way you know what the first and last stitch of each row is and your ends will be straight. But again, this is just a simple double crochet row and this is what row one looks like. So for row two, you're going to go ahead and chain two and turn your work. Now for row two, you're going to sing, you're going to double crochet in the back loop across the row. So this means you're going to just make the double crochets like you did in row one, and then you're going to just go in the back loop only. So again, that chain two counts as your first double crochet. So you're going to skip this first stitch right here and you're going to be working in this next stitch. Now what I mean by back loop is if you flip your work over, you see these two loops. Now if you go through both of the loops, which is what we would normally do, that would be the entire stitch. For the back loop, we're only going to be going into the back loop of that stitch. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that back loop only, and make your double crochet as normal. And what this does is it forms a nice ridge. So again, yarn over your hook, find that back loop only, and make your double crochet as normal. Find that back loop and make your double crochet. And then you can see that little bit of the ridge showing just right there. And again, it just forms that nice ribbed effect and it keeps you nice and warm. So for row two, you wanna just continue making one double crochet in the back loop of each stitch across. And I will show you how to end row two and move on to row three of your pattern. Okay, I've come to the end of row two and I have one stitch left. So again, you just wanna go in the back loop only. And then you've completed your row. So as you could see that little bit of a ridge here, and again, it just forms that nice cozy pattern when you form that ridge. So now you wanna continue on to row three so row three through 12 are gonna be the exact same as row two. So again, you just chain two, turn your work, and you're going to make one double crochet in each of the back loops of the stitch across your row. So again, you're gonna skip that very first stitch right here, and you're going to find that next stitch and go into that back loop only. 
and you're going to do this for a total of 12 rows and by the end of row 12 your button cowl should measure about 12 inches wide. Now if you want to make this a little bit shorter or if you want to make this a little bit longer you can definitely do that. You can make this wider if you would like by just making more or less rows. It's completely up to you but this is just the length that I prefer or the width that I prefer that fit me very well but you can definitely customize it. However just be aware that if you do decide to use a different yarn so say you wanted to use a thinner yarn you are definitely going to have to adjust your hook size and your width and length of your cowl to make it to the size that you would like or if you wanted to use the same size that I would like you would just have to adjust using the different yarn and hook sides if you decided to do that so just keep that in mind so again for rows 3 through 12 you're going to make one double crochet in each of the back loops across your row and I will meet up with you at the end of row 12 and show you how to move on to the next step of this three button cowl. Okay so I'm at the end of row 12 and I just cut my yarn to have a long tail. To finish row 12 you're just going to yarn over and pull through that chain or that stitch and just tighten. So this is what 12 rows looks like and you can see all the beautiful texture and the different colors that this self-striping yarn has. Again this is going to be super warm in the cold winter months so this is definitely something that will be very nice to make for yourself, a family member, a friend, a co-worker, anybody that is always cold definitely a very nice project and I like the ribbing because it has that extra warmth included inside at least that's how I feel now for your buttons so for your buttons the bulky weight yarn is a little bit too big for these buttonholes however I kind of just make it work and kind of just really you know thread the yarn through However, if you do not want to use the same yarn that you use for this project, you can always use the um, you can always use thread or a thinner yarn. Just make sure that the color of the yarn or the thread is about the same color as your cowl to make sure that it hides in the cowl. And then all you want to do is just attach your buttons. So if you're using yarn like I did you're just going to get a tail I'm gonna say about maybe six to eight inches or so and then you're just gonna go ahead and I usually get my tapestry needle and then I kind of just twist it to make it a little bit smaller and then I just kind of weave it in a little bit so you're gonna do this for all three of your buttons and then I will meet up with you and I will show you how to attach your buttons to your cowl. So thread three of your buttons and I will meet back up with you and show you how to add that to your cowl and also for your cowl don't forget to weave in your ends. Okay now that you have all your buttons threaded now it's time to place them on your cowl and yes you probably hear my loud purring kitty right next to me. So once you have your buttons threaded, you're just going to place them either on the left or on the right side of your cowl. So you want the short end to be in front of you and you're going to place your cowl like just like this and you're going to place your buttons on the side here. So I kind of just place them at random. So you want to have about two inches or so in between. You definitely want to have one in the corner and you want to have one kind of in the center and then your final one 
right here about on top. So again, you want them to be about three uh, two inches apart from each other. And then how you would construct this is you would get the other end and you would kind of just fold it over just like this. So this top end should meet up with this corner and it should look just like that, kind of like when you fold it. It looks a little bit awkward right now, so it's better if you try it on yourself and kind of just see how you would like it. But I would go ahead and just attach your button. So what I do is I kind of just have the strings pull on each side and then I kind of just double knot it and then I weave in my ends and then cut off the extra. And then what's nice about this cowl, because it's so bulky, if you pull it apart a little bit, it has button loops already in. So once you attach your button, all you're going to do is just weave it in between your stitches, just like this. And then that way you have your button formed. So I'm going to go ahead and sew my buttons on. And I will meet up with you and show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, once you have your buttons sewed on, then you can begin to form your cowl. So again, you can have the buttons on either side. If you want the buttons on the right side, your cowl will kind of drape this way. But if you want, you can have your buttons on this side and your cowl will drape this way. So either way is acceptable. And then all you're going to do is just get the other part of your cowl. So you want that other side right here, this top side. And you're going to find that top button. And you're simply just going to go in between the stitches. So just like right here. And just, just going to insert your button. Just like that. And then you're going to do the same thing with the other two buttons. And I kind of just eyeball it. There's no real section where you can put the button. You can just put it wherever you feel comfortable. And then towards the bottom, you have that. And then you can kind of just fluff out the cowl a little bit to fit your needs. And there you go. So again, you can have the buttons on either side. It's completely customizable. If you want to have this cobble be a little bit larger, all you would need to do is just make more chains. You can have the cowl wider, so just make more rows. You can do whatever you want to completely customize this. Now to wear it a few different ways, you do not have to wear all three buttons at once. You can always just take two of the buttons out and just have the one. Again, it's completely customizable. So you can just have it drape over your shoulder with just the one button. You can have two buttons on. Or if you really want to, you can have all the buttons off and kind of just fold it over a little bit and just have it rest over your shoulders just in case you wanted to have that option as well. So again, there's a a few different ways that you can wear this three button cowl. You can make it larger, you can make it wider, you can make it in any color that you would want. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, you do not have to use the Karen um, tea cake yarn. You can use any bulky weight yarn that you would like. So you can make this in a multiple of different colors, whatever suits your needs. And these make great gifts if you want to give them to someone who's always cold or if you want to just wear this with your outfit or you want to wear this with your coat. Either way, this will keep you nice and toasty warm. So thank you so much for joining me today on learning how to make this three button cowl. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope you give this tutorial a try. Now it's time to like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, happy crocheting! Bye!